Hello everyone. Thank you for coming to our presentation. I'm Nobuyuki Oishi. This study is on detecting freezing of gate with ERBOs that are trained from virtual reality motion capture data. People with Parkinson's often have difficulties in walking. As you can see in the video, the gait of the person on the treadmill suddenly gets unstable in the middle of walking. This is called freezing of gait, or FOG for short, and we want to detect this freezing of gait with an earable device. First off, I'd like to provide you with a brief explanation of wearable queuing systems. This topic has been receiving attention in recent years as non-pharmacological methods for mitigating FOG. Previous studies have used IMU sensors attached at various body locations, such as the back, thighs, and heels, to detect fog. But fog detection at the ear has not been evaluated. Earable devices are potentially well suited for audio cueing, because they are capable of both motion sensing and providing audio feedback with one single device. However, there are no existing earable IMU datasets, and collecting such datasets is not only time-consuming, but also has ethical concerns. It has not been confirmed if earables could be used for fog detection. So, in this study, prior to collecting real earable IMU data, we first simulate virtual earable IMU by utilizing motion capture data collected in an immersive virtual reality environment. After that, we evaluate the fog detection performance at the ear using the virtual IMU data. Please take a look at the video on the left. It shows how our motion capture data was collected. The virtual reality environment simulates a corridor setting, including obstacles, narrow passages, and turns, which are common triggers of fog. The system reports the 3D coordinates of 41 markers and the belt speed of the treadmill. The dataset is 1 hour and 44 minutes in total and contains 163 fog events collected from 6 Parkinson's disease patients. Many events are very short, with 50% of them being shorter than 1.2 seconds. This is a part of motion capture data we collected, and this is a person walking on the treadmill. You can see the left and right legs moving, and left markers in blue and right markers in red. At the top, we have markers placed at the head, and we consider that the ears are between the front and back markers, and we defined the coordinate system of a virtual earable placed at the ear, like in the figure on the left. This image at the bottom is a zoomed-in version of the head markers with the coordinate system of the earable. By applying physical and geometric transformation, we obtain virtual acceleration and angular velocity at the left ear. These are the generated virtual earable data, and the parts marked in pink indicate that fog happened in that time range. We validated the mapping method by comparing the real IMU data and the virtual IMU data collected at the same time in realistic movement scenarios. In this validation experiment, we additionally collected the data from a healthy subject. The figure on the right shows the markers and the IMU sensor placement. The figure at the top shows the comparison of the real accelerometer data in blue and the simulated one in orange. You can see that the orange virtual IMU data are quite well aligned to the real IMU data. The two figures at the bottom are error histograms of simulated accelerometer and gyroscope. This is the machine learning pipeline for freezing of gate detection. After the mapping from the motion capture data to the virtual IMU, we apply standard sliding window-based machine learning approach to detect freezing of gait. We compute the number of features and then train a random forest classifier for each patient after feature selection and resampling. Using the pipeline, we evaluated the user-specific fog detection performance. Our results show that 80% of fog were detected on average with the virtual IMU at the ear, and that it worked well for most users. 
When compared to the results of virtual IMU at the heel, the mean sensitivity with the virtual IMU at the ear was about 6 percentage points lower compared with that of virtual IMU at the heel. Overall, the results are promising, and with this, I'd like to wrap up my presentation. This is the first study that evaluated fog detection performance at the ear with Parkinson's disease patients. We first showed how to simulate virtual IMU at the ear using motion capture data. And using the virtual IMU data, we demonstrated the potential of fog detection with earables. Although the results were very promising, we consider that there is still a need for further evaluation with larger scale datasets. Our future work also includes testing the fog detection models trained from virtual IMU data with real IMU data collected over ground. We believe that continuation of this work would provide a new option for fog assistance. That's all for my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.